In today's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to add great looking confidence bands to your line charts. To start off with, we need to connect to some data. In this example, I'm going to use the Web Data Connector for Quandl, built by Craig Bloodworth of the Information Lab. So I'm going to enter data.theinformationlab.co.uk, hit enter, and then I'm going to choose this Quandl search option. Over in Quandl, I've gone ahead and pre-searched for Tableau, our favorite stock, and I'm going to cop copy this Quandl code. And then over in Tableau, all I need to do is just paste that in here, click on Get Headers, and then I specify my data type for each of the fields. When I'm done doing that, I simply click on Get Data. You can see Tableau extracting the data via the, via the Quandl API and downloading it to my computer. Great, so now you can see if I drag option drag date out to the view, let's go ahead and do it at the day level, and let's put our closing price on here. You can see our favorite stock was up at 100 and almost $129 on July 22nd, and as of yesterday, it sits at $83.19. Okay, so that's great. Um, so now how do we actually add these nice looking confidence bands on here? So there's a few things we could do. So let's go ahead and create a calculated field and we'll call this our upper band. And I want my upper band to be based on uh, basically just one standard deviation from the closing price. So I'm going to do the sum of the close plus the window standard deviation of the sum of the close. Okay, something like that, hit OK. And now when I drop this onto my secondary axis, and then I'll go ahead and synchronize those, you can see I'm one standard deviation above my, my, uh, my blue line. So now let's go ahead and create another one for the lower band. And for this one, we're just going to do the opposite. We're gonna do the window standard deviation of the sum of the close minus the sum of the close. Hit OK. And we'll drop this onto the secondary axis as well. Oops. And um, I did something wrong there, so let me double check my calculation. So uh, let's go ahead and edit this. And I actually did this slightly wrong. I should have done the sum of the close minus the window standard deviation. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so now, um, basically we have three lines, not quite there yet. I need to synchronize this again. And now what I wanna do is I need to create my band. So I'm gonna do create calculated field and I'll call this band width. And it's simply going to be my upper band, oops, minus my lower band. Hit okay. All right, so now the trick to creating these nice looking band lines is to take this bandwidth and replace the upper band with it. Okay, and you see I get this straight line. That's all right, I'm not worried about that yet. The trick is to right click on my secondary axis, change the mark type to an area chart, and then go ahead and rearrange these so that my bandwidth is on top. Okay, so you can see we've got the makings of a nice little band line here in this orange but I'm gonna do some, some formatting here. First, I'm gonna right click on my left axis and move those marks to the front because I want that line to stick out. And then I'm gonna do double click on my color palette. I'm gonna change my bandwidth to gray. So let's maybe pick a light gray for that. I want my lower band to be white. So actually I'll just double click on that and choose white. And then let's go ahead and just make our uh, closing line. Uh, let's, make it, let's make it red the back of it. Hit OK. Oops, and for some reason Tableau has a weird bug here where it does this resetting of the axis. Okay, so this is our first um, great looking band line here. So I'd like to go ahead and do all of my formatting at this point. I'm going to switch everything to my favorite font, which is Avenir. Oops, I meant to do that here on the worksheet option. Avenir. Copy that and then go ahead and paste it here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, 
So um, this is our, and you see in our tooltip, it looks, it looks okay, uh, but it doesn't really have everything we want in it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the closing price on the detail shelf so that I always see the closing price. And then let's format our tooltip and we'll call this a date and we'll just leave that at close. Okay, very good. So now no matter where you hover, you see the same information. All right, maybe do, uh, now we'll go ahead and leave the, the, uh, the lines in the background. Let's do a little bit more formatting just because I really am a little anal retentive about these. I'm gonna remove my row and column dividers and change my grid lines to dashes. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck. Uh, or let's go ahead and let's leave this header here because you know it looks sometimes it looks nice to have the header on both sides, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, and rename that. So let's call this close. All right. So and then did that weird formatting again. Looks like we've got a bug there. Hopefully somebody from Tableau watches this video and fixes that bug. Okay. So this is our closing price. But what else can we do with this? Let's go ahead and duplicate this sheet. Now what we could do is maybe we want to allow the user to specify the number of standard deviations uh, to display. So right now we're looking at one standard deviation. If I go in here into my calculation, you'll see it's just one standard deviation here. But what if we want to allow our users to pick you know, as many standard deviations as they want? So to do that, I'm going to create a, pra create a parameter. I'm going to call it uh, how many standard, or actually, well, let's just call it standard deviations. And let's go ahead and leave it as we can make it an integer and maybe do a range from maybe one to, uh, let's say one to five with a step size of one. Okay. So now we've got this new parameter here and uh, we can flick through it, but it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't tab told Tableau what to do. Now I don't want to ruin this original that I created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate three of my fields here. And uh, my, let's start with our lower band. And what we want to do is we want to say this, uh, uh, let's see, I'm just going to say lower band user because it's user controlled or uh, yeah, we'll say because it's user controlled. So what I want to do now is I want to put in my standard deviations times my window standard deviation. It looks like, uh, okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to just copy that. And then for my upper band, Again, I'm going to just call this user because I want it's just a, a way for me to know that it's user driven. Hit OK. And then I'm going to, I don't need my upper band, and then I need to lastly change my bandwidth to make this user. OK. And hit OK. So this bandwidth user is going to go on top of this one. And then my lower band user is going to go on top of that one. All right, see, nothing's changed yet because I haven't, uh, we're at one standard deviation. But now as I flick through, you'll see that things change nice and neat. So um, it looks like maybe there's something a little bit broken with my uh, calculation here. So my lower band, I think I'm not using the right. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I'm doing this wrong. So upper band user minus lower band user. Sorry, I forgot to change that calculation. OK, there we go. So now you can see we get you know this. Uh, interesting look here. Okay, so let's call this our uh, closing price by parameter. Okay, and then lastly, maybe let's do one more thing. So let's duplicate this sheet, and maybe this time instead of using the uh, closing price, maybe we want to do a moving average of the closing price. So I'm going to just go ahead and do add table calculation and we'll do this a moving average. And let's say we want to do a seven day moving average. So I'm going to do six plus the current value, hit okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over to the uh, data 
uh, data pane so that I can save it. So I'm going to call this my moving average close. Hit OK. All right, but now um, wouldn't it be nice if this was also user driven? So well, well, let's leave it like that for now. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate these fields again. And this time, instead of uh, my lower band is going to be my, instead of my sum of close here, it's going to be my moving average close. So let's just go ahead and copy that. And we'll paste that in here. And then give this a uh, name. Uh, I'll call it lowing at lower band moving. And then let's do the upper band. So upper band moving, replace our calculation. And you notice that's still driven off of our uh, parameter. And then we need to fix our bandwidth. I don't want to make that mistake again. So this is going to be our upper band moving minus our lower band moving. OK, so I need to put my bandwidth on here and my lower band moving on here. All right, very nice. OK, so this gives us a nice, uh, you know, a smoother looking line here. But lastly, maybe we want to, in our moving average close, you'll see it's doing a seven day moving average. Uh, but maybe we want to make that user defined. We want, we want to let the user pick how much smoothing they want to put in there. So let's create another parameter. And let's call this um, days for moving average. And we'll make it an integer. And let's go ahead and say we'll do a range from maybe one to maybe a 60 day moving average, step size of one, hit OK. All right, and let me drag these windows up a little bit so we can see our parameters. Let's show our parameter control. And let's, let's go ahead and stick it on seven for now. So a seven day moving average. So in order to change, we want to go into our moving average close um, field here. And what we want to do here is we want to do, uh, we want this to be a negative six, but our days for moving average is currently seven. Okay, so we need to do days for moving average uh, minus one. We need to do the negative of that. So this is going to be seven minus one is six, so that gets us back to where we were before. So now my user can come in here and say they want to do a uh, maybe a 30 day moving average you'll see that we now have this really nice uh, this really nice view here. Maybe they want to do a 60 day moving average, something like that. And you'll see it gets smoother and smoother. Okay, so let's call this one our moving average close. And I'll continue to clean this up a little bit before I publish it, but um, Hopefully that gives you three nice examples of how to do uh, really nice looking uh, band lines around, around your chart. Again, just to recap, um, the first thing you do is you put your, your, uh, your first measure on the row shelf and then on the column shelf, I'm sorry, on the secondary shelf, I'll just build it one more time for you, how about that? So I'm going to start by uh, looking at the day level. I'm going to stick my clothes in the rows. And then I'm going to take my, uh, I went ahead and created a few calculations. If you remember, the first one was my lower band. So I'm going to put that on the secondary axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, band width and put that also on the secondary axis. And then I have to rearrange these. So I want my, or no, my band width is, a, is on top. That's fine. And I want to change my mark type to area. Okay. And then synchronize the axis and then move this mark to the front. And there you go. Really simple way to create really nice looking band lines. I hope that helps. And if there's any other future tips you'd like to see, just let me know. Have a great day.